Breen here, and welcome to episode 3 of the 31K for 31 Days podcast. I was speaking to Amanda and Lisa Keat about some of the epic fundraisers that they have run since 2014 in their brother Richard's memory. They've raised some fantastic amounts of money for the KBRT, and we discuss all of that in today's episode. Right, okay, so I'm joined by two very good friends from home in Cavan that are Amanda Keat and Lisa Keat. Um, so I suppose how I got to know uh, the two Keats were we were all in the triathlon club at home in Cavan together and uh, they were the first pers- first people, I guess, who ran a fundraiser um, that I knew of for KBRT. So I decided it would be good to get them on for a few questions uh, get them to tell their story of the fundraisers that they've ran and um, they're crazy the pair of them and uh, just just uh, insights into yeah. what it takes to, to do what they've done and uh, why they did what they did uh, for KBRT. So um, guys can I ask, I'll put it to both of you and you can decide between us who's going to answer the first question but uh, would you mind telling us why you got involved in uh, doing some fundraising for KBRT initially? Go on, go, go for it, Amanda, because you know I um, won't stop our, talking when I start. Yeah, I know. Get my opportunity in now. <laughs> um, our brother Richard died of sudden adult death in Australia, in Perth, in 2014. And the Kevin Bell repatriated him back home to Ireland so we could say goodbye to him. And then we decided that we'd do a fundraiser in Richard's memory and to help other families who were going to be in the same situation as we had found ourselves. That's very really good. It. Thank you very and much. And then it's over to Lisa for the harebrained ideas. Great. Now, I remember, um, I've been to two of the fundraisers. The last one you did, I was actually over here in the desert. So uh, I remember the first one, I remember thinking it was such a novel idea. And uh, it was a great one for uniting, uh, I guess, all the triathletes and cyclists around the cabin area at the time. Uh, Lisa, would you like to tell us a bit more about um, the cycle and sorry, the stationary cycle that it was and uh, how that came apart, yeah. how it came about, I mean? Well, so I suppose, Brian, we kind of channeled our energy for the good. You know, it's hard to know what to do with yourself when you lose somebody that's so close to you. So I guess we kind of threw ourselves in with gusto and decided to do an absolutely massive event, which it ended up being. Don't know if we ever thought it was going to be just as big as it was, Amanda. <laughs> Um, but we done, a, we done a stationary cycle and it was located in the market square in the centre of the town in Cavan. So you're right, it was a static cycle. I think there was how many uh, bikes, Amanda? Was there I think 60? 60, 60. 60. 60. I think it was 60 static bikes. Yeah. And our aim was basically to cycle the distance from Perth back to Cavan. Um, that as kind the crow of flies. As, as the crow flies, yeah. So it started with that initial idea where we would only really get into cycling and I joined the triathlon club actually only that very year. And uh, really um, just shows you what a great club that is because there was a lot of members from the Cabin Triathlon Club that lent us equipment and lent us their legs on the day and just generally supported us around the time that we lost Richard. So it was really from there that the cycle came about. Then it snowballed and we ended up having a world record, Guinness World Record bike in the middle of it all, where you had to cycle a kilometre. It couldn't stop, so you just had to go from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person. That was a a watt bike, wasn't it? A watt bike, yeah. Yeah. I think that went on for about 12 hours as well. So it was an over the whole day uh, thing, Brian, so you'll remember well, I'm sure. It was from 7 o'clock in the morning right through to 7 in the evening. And then we had loads of big screens up and we had a map showing Elmo moving across from Perth to Cavan. So the people of Cavan came out in their droves. I think there was over yeah. a thousand people that lent their legs that day and like we smashed getting home. Like I think that's 16,800 kilometers and we smashed it. Um, and you might have heard it here first, Brian, but actually we had cycled the distance long before the seven o'clock. <laughs> I didn't actually know of, that. Yeah, so there you go. There's an insider scoop for you today. I think we had it finished like maybe an hour or an hour and a half too early. Yeah, I, th- I think wow. it was about five or half five that it was finished at. Yeah, and, and when did to... and did panic station start to set in, or when, when did this when this started to become apparent? Like, no, uh, what, what no, no, do? no. Just just no. slow down, elbow on his lap, no, flying home from Clint Australia. Clinton Pratt sorted it all out. Who? Clinton seen Clinton who oh, was Clinton head was doing of all the, that, was he? Yeah, he was head Clinton of the 
technical side of things. So Clinton could see what was happening. So he just forgot to be inputting a few kilometers. And then every so often he'd move Elmo further back along the screen from around two o'clock. Brilliant. And it was, it was so funny though, Brian, because yeah. like, cause everybody had it in their head and like we'd done like a countdown bit at the end. It was like, okay, come on. We're on the road from Dublin down to Cavan. And me and Amanda were standing there going, okay, we've totally done this like hours ago. And everybody was there and they were pedaling. Yeah, and yeah. Pedaling no, I, I was on, I, was I decided I'd go in for the latter stages of the day. Um, on the on the Breffney Wheelers and Toronto Club WhatsApps, who were kind of saying, right, well, who's going to go in for the first shift, or who's going in there later on in the day? And I I I opted I had something on that morning, uh, something to do a football, I think, out at home. So I decided to go out uh, for the latter stages of the day, and it was it was just great crack, and it was a great sense of community, and it was great to see so many cyclists in one place because cycling was only kind of starting to really develop. Uh, yeah. From let's say from that time on, or you know, um, like it was around that time, I guess that the race league was starting to come, come to, to come to being. And the triathlon club got very big the year you guys joined. I remember the year we joined, you might have had maybe ten, twelve extra members, and then maybe five of them stuck around. And then the, when your influx, uh, which was twenty fourteen, like the, there was a huge crowd joined that year, and. Uh, what a crowd that joined as well they're such crack you know um, but uh, it was great to see so many people about uh, huge community support and the crack was 90 and then um, yeah I remember seeing Elmo going around the screen and all of a sudden he was down uh, coming past um, like the bus station and on along that road and back up next thing along next thing uh, Benny Sheridan and Elmo uh, suit lands up the town in a go-kart yeah it was it was yeah. a brilliant day like I mean and like that, none of that would have been possible, Brian, without there's like a, a group of friends and family very close that's done so much work in the background to that. Like the organizing was absolutely immense. There was nights and nights of meetings, nights and nights of uh, trying to figure out what way it was going to work. How could we keep that uh, world record bike going? Who was doing this? Who was doing that? So there was all those helpers and yeah. it's too many to name, but... They Can you tell me a are. bit more about the world record bike and how was that? Was that trying? So we're trying to get the fastest kilometer on a bike, or was it just how, how did that like work? Like a relay, was it, Amanda? Yeah, and I think it was. It was to get the fastest kilometer on a bike, but without it stopping. So you, okay. you had to do a really quick changeover of people, and you had to have so many in the queue at any time, and you, everything had to be timed precisely so that it wouldn't stop. Yeah, I know by the time I got there, I didn't get a chance to go on it. Uh, I'd say, judging by the efforts of some people, they, were, they look quite exhausted coming off it, so maybe it was for the best. Um, <laughs> but then, Breen, you know the way you mentioned about all the cyclists and, and all that part? The amount of people that never sat on a bike probably since they were a child <laughs> yeah. that came in that day, yeah. like old friends of family, like, you know, Team Clan Lask in there, uh, with Deirdre Murdy and that crew, you know, they were all in, in their droves. All of these people, like... It was just incredible and it's lovely like when you look back at the pictures and you see your elite cyclist and then beside them could have just been some Some person that never sat on a bike before and everybody was doing their bit. It was, you know, it was really, really good. But it had to be, it had to be really massive because we wanted something that kind of justified Richard's memory. He was a big, bigger than life type of character. And uh, nothing was going to do it for us, only that, like, you know, we call him the rock star. Yes. And uh, it, it had to be fitting for him. So that's why it ended up probably being bigger than we expected. We had thought yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember, uh, I remember, actually, I was supposed to get my shades there. These are all, he's had the aviators on at the end there as well. And everyone's looking yeah. right. And he's all spoke very well at the end, which was fantastic. And Collie said his few words as well. Collie from KBRT. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was a fantastic event. And then, I guess, it worked out well for you. You're very proud of your achievements. Will we put it that way, or do you like to go forward on that? Um, do you know, it's not even a, a, a pride in your achievements. I think when we originally set out, Brian, to do that, we wanted to help one other family. That was really all we wanted to do. Can we help one other family and celebrate Richard's life Yes. and uh, raise awareness for the KBRT. So there was always that element of raising the awareness because KBRT weren't that long in existence at that no. stage. Richard, no, they were about six months. Uh, no, they were only about six were months in existence, yeah. Because yeah. Kevin was had... one of the first kind of people to be brought home. Yeah, you know, like, I think Richard was number six or number seven. Well, yeah. I had my years wrong, so, yeah. 
Oh, it had only know. been yeah. in existence since June 2013 when Kevin was tragically killed in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. think like. Oh, yeah, that would have been right. Be, yeah. It, yeah. It's I, fair I, to say, Amanda, that 2012 we, in my head. Yeah. We, uh, we, we celebrated so much, Brian, like when we set up our, our Facebook page, our RKMF Facebook mm. page, and we got to like 1,000 likes. And we were like, this is absolutely amazing because that's a thousand people that mightn't have known anything about KBRT before yeah. this. Yeah. And it's going to spread and they're going to know and they can tell their friend and their friend's friend if anything like this ever happens to somebody else. So that was always like super important to us. Yeah. Yes. And then it got to 2,000 likes. And then our post reach was reaching like 10,000 people. And we were celebrating that, weren't we, Amanda, in the background, just yeah. going, this is brilliant. This is what we wanted. We wanted to share mm. the word. The money side of it, I suppose we were always like, if we can just help one other person, maybe about eight grand, that type of figure was what we kind of had in our head. Yes. And then we ended up between the local businesses, the people on the day and everything. Yeah. Like we raised 54,000 euro on that one, that one event. One, one now, event. I mean, that just shows you the incredible generosity of the community and the people in Cavan. Yeah. yeah. Um, then Richard's friends, they did another cycle over in Perth that coincided with it. That had raised money that came into that pot as well. Yes. And then his work colleagues in England as well that he was due to go back to work with um, in TSL. They had done their cycle too. And that came across and we played those videos on the day as well. So just showed you the strength of uh, people coming together in their communities, yeah. in their groups of friends, the power that that can achieve. Like, so that was 54,000. So work it out. That's how Amazing. many families helped. Yeah, and that like was yeah. what we found incredible about it, that we it wasn't yeah. a bribery and it was more like a we've helped these people. We know that that money's going there and that's going to help somebody. And then as well as that, raising the whole awareness piece, knowing that you're passing that good word on. Um, yeah. They were the two biggest thing. I don't know if that's pride. It just felt like you were worthwhile. You were doing. No, and I matter. think it's a fantastic way to look upon it. Um, yeah, helping another family. Uh, that really means. Means, yeah, means a lot. It's more than yeah. anything. Yeah, when yeah, when you know what those yeah. those days feel like, Brian. Yeah, you know what they feel like as well. Yeah, and look, sure. I think um, I, I was glad to have the, the pair of at the end of the phone now when Dad passed away. Um, they were tough days, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, you know what? Uh, yeah, uh, thank yous before and thank yous again. These are these are great to me that time, and um, because you see, had been through it, you knew a lot of what I was going through and what I had to had to get over and what to expect and stuff you know so um yeah yeah no that, that's the part though Brian. that's the part that you feel like you're helping people with yeah you know um move on oh. a little over 12 months was it and the next event was at consummate park uh cycling the distance from uh pert to uh cavin just wasn't enough uh he's, he's decided let's try it in two feet <laughs> yeah well yeah. i got pregnant as well so that yeah. didn't help. So I had to do something uh, bringing that I was able to partake in or I just would have felt too much on the periphery. Yeah. So I uh, think Amanda, I kind of said to you, well, sure, look, at, we can, I can always walk some of it, you know, bump and all. And then I suppose it was another one of those things going, but it can't just be normal because that would be kind of not very good boring. for Richard's memory or be a bit no, boring. You, you know, have, can't you just do, Absolutely. can't just do like a 5K or a 10K run. Like that would be, you know, ridiculous so that's why we ended up dressing as smurfs um, i remember that yeah that, day. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun um and people again, must have thought it was a good hen party in town yeah exactly and everybody came out again it was fantastic that was another great day wasn't it amanda oh it was brilliant and you walked you walked around consummate park walked yeah. around and it was about Clinton two again wasn't it? yeah yeah, he came to the rescue with his computer knowledge and program and knowledge and you pressed the buttons yeah. every time you did a lap and it counted you down and moved Delmo across the screen. Yeah, yeah, so, no, it was great. Um, no, I remember like every time you got, you went around as well, you got a little paper armband, you know. And, oh, uh, yeah, to try and keep count and then competition started between yeah. oh, individuals yeah. as to who could get the most armbands and then yeah. every time you completed 10 laps, you got a gold Gold band. one, yeah. A, I was, yeah. Yeah, you got a blue one for one lap and... Gold one for 10. Then, that was the bragging rights right there, so it was. Cause I remember seeing John... Well, there was only... There's only one man that can really get full bragging rights on that day, and that's Paul Garvey from Cavan Triathlon yeah. Club. Absolutely, yeah. And Paul took it to a different level, Brian. Do you remember that? I think he ran a double marathon. He did. He ran 42 um, laps. 
his arm was yeah. completely covered with his arms, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with all his, um, uh, he was absolutely incredible. Uh, it was a massive achievement for him, but, you know, it's great to see people taking that challenge on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, uh, it was a really enjoyable day. And even the staunchest of staunch cyclists from Cavan uh, got off their bikes after their morning spin and uh, you could be seen running around uh, Consummate Park, which was great to see as well, you know, yeah. so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a really, and again, another really enjoyable event and a day long event. And might have been a small night in the town afterwards, and uh, not major. I think everyone was, was quite tired. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wrecked. But uh, yeah, and wrecked. there's, I'm, I'm just thinking there again, like you know, there's the, the likes of the local businesses bringing that kind of helped us out along the way. Like Cap and yeah. Man came out that day, done tea and coffee. Yes, Jerry, you know, thawed us out in the orchard that evening. And um, the previous year, we had help from you know. Cafe Mana again, McMahon's, the Imperial, you know, like local businesses around the square, like that all added to those events. Yeah. Um, having yeah. people supporting you like that, people that obviously we know, and uh, then coming from their business side of things, rowing in behind you to support you at those bigger events, because they're very different from, say, you know, when we go on next, and I would talk about when we did the marathon, the, them type of ones were very, very different, and yeah. uh, the, the support from the local business really added to yeah. do the whole day you know yeah right moving swiftly on tell us about the marathon because i kind of have forgotten about that one how could you have forgotten about that that was your first I marathon. definitely was my had. first marathon as well yeah, yeah. i definitely will know. never forget it i'll but never bring, forget you know, it either that's remember, a funny story though that's I was a never funny del- story i was delighted as to get into a pub is when i got into oil can yeah. harry's or whatever is it oil can Car- oil, oil harry's, yeah, right? yeah. harry's yeah that was great yeah. crack um, yeah. we, do, we we signed up for that marathon, um, Brian, because Daddy wanted to do a marathon for mm. his 60th. So he, he turned 60 uh, that January, and me and Amanda bought it for him for his birthday present and said, Right, Daddy, you said you wanted to do a marathon for your 60th, so there you go. Happy birthday. Yes. Uh, Daddy <laughs> smashed it, actually, so he did. Um, he absolutely smashed it. Yeah. But again, it, it was a totally different thing because it was the first time that we'd done something for the KBRT that really was just, you know, the three of us as individuals. So it was very, very different. But actually, um, it was probably a little bit uh, deeper by times because you you know yourself, you had to do so much running and so much time alone. So you had a lot of time thinking about why you were doing it and a lot of time to kind of think about your memories and Richard and, you know, and on the day itself, it was very emotional running Mm. in Richard's name for the day. But it it was very, very different kind of a thing. But nonetheless, we all crossed the finish line. We met down there in the pub and it was uh, another massive achievement because I could myself and Amanda, as we say, we only joined the triathlon club in 2014. Couple years before that, yeah. That was Man, 2016. Been, that was October 2016. Yeah. Tell you yeah, what, we got yeah. fantastic weather that day. Do you remember how good the weather was? Yeah, super. Yeah, it Couldn't was. Get over it. We've been it really lucky. Every event we've warm. had, we've had amazing weather. Yeah. We've got tan we lines from everything we've done. Mm. Every yeah. event we've done. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Can't beat it, especially at home in Ireland. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starting to get tan lines now myself. Not so ah, there's nothing like the you. cycling gear to get your dead straight oh, tan quit, lines. quit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like somebody got a ruler and sprayed you below your knee. Or just, Absolutely, yeah. So I'm going to have yeah. to start properly putting on sun cream now before I go out in the mornings. Um, <laughs> it's getting quite hot. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so the marathon, that was uh, 2016. So was that two? So that was 2014, 2015, 2016. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then... The marathon broke us, so we took no. a year out. <laughs> no, we took a wee bit of a break then, Brian. Sometimes it's good to take a break when you're doing Absolutely. so much fundraising because like, you don't want to be in people's faces either. And hammering you know, the same people uh, all the time. And, yeah, like yeah. people have been very, very good to us. And you're kind of a wee bit yeah. conscious of that going, you know, our community and everybody around us has really given us an awful lot and supported us in our endeavours to, you know, raise funds for the KBRT. But sometimes you just have to step back a little bit and as well as that, there's so much organising involved with me and Amanda both have a young family. Exactly. We kind of yeah. sometimes have to just take a step back and go, do you know what? A little bit of time now for home and family. We'll do something else. And we kind of knew at that stage that the next thing we did was going to be fairly big again, as in a group type of activity or something. It was going to take a lot of organising, a lot of logistics yeah. to get it going, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, then I came up with the most marvellous idea, Brian. That's what you want to know about, isn't it? How politically inspired, is it? 
was politically inspired. Imagine, yeah. do you remember that phone call that I made to you? Yeah, um, I do. I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> go on. Amanda hates it. She, she, I ring funny. Amanda and I, so I'm sitting on the couch and I'm watching the news and they're talking about Brexit and they start with that bridge in Bell Coo and Black Line, you know, that bridge. I mean, yes. I got the right name. That would be... Yeah, yeah. Bell yeah. Coo and Black Line, yeah. But anyway, they're doing an interview on that bridge. I was there thinking, going, oh my God, can you imagine people from those two communities, like, this could be, be a separated. serious problem for them yeah. with the border. Do you, know every, do you know every St. Patrick's Day, the parade goes from one end to the other? I can't remember if it goes from Belcoo into Black Line or Black Line into Belcoo, but it's a shared parade. I didn't every, know that. Say. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's, no. a really, that's really, really good. Um, yeah, so that's where my idea came from. And I rang Amanda and they said, oh my God, Amanda, I've got a great idea. And she obviously took a deep breath in and went, please, Lisa, not again. What are you thinking now? And I said, I'm watching the news and I think it'd be such a good idea if we cycled the entire border between the north and the south of Ireland. And then there was a pause. Then I think Amanda went quiet a long for a pause. while. <laughs> and I said, I think it'd be really, really good. KBRT are obviously based in Uri. Yeah. They are KMF for us. We're based in Cavan. And what, like they, they, there's no border for KBRT. They help everybody. No, and that's it's one thing that's a state the over and over yeah. again. You know, it, it's it's yeah. um, it's a trust yeah. for all thirty six counties. You know, and yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. There's no border, so that's kind of then rang, rang a home to me that this was definitely the thing to do, and that we would start up in Donegal, and that we would finish over on the Newry side, so heading over for Carlingford, and that Collie and them could uh, join us over there. Yeah. And um, so that's what we decided to do. So there was a right bit of training involved in that. Mm. Uh, yeah. You enjoyed it a though, Amanda. Once you got over the initial shock, you thought it was an awesome idea. I thought yeah. it was a fantastic and idea. Then, and then yeah. it was a great idea, Brian, without a doubt. But then came the training and the, and the mapping put, out of it. You have to put the board and into action. John Lord, John Lord did up our maps for us to yeah. try and take us the least hilliest route possible while Which is very important when you're doing these kind of things, yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of hard in Donegal to avoid <laughs> hills. Hills of Donegal, yes. Mountains. And yeah, it was a very traumatic experience, the whole thought of it. <laughs> and I live to tell the tale. <laughs> Just about. The Perrys are here now and are stronger for it, without a doubt. No, uh, it, so was, it was they, brilliant. Well, aren't you lucky that she's got those over in day one? So it was a three day event over the Maybank Holiday weekend, and it's just fitting that we're sitting here on the Sunday of a Maybank Holiday weekend, uh, exactly two years after you completed uh, the event, after you completed that challenge. Yeah, yeah sitting yeah. down. It's great to be here sitting down. You sat down all that weekend as well. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, actually, you know, Brian, that was, I absolutely loved that challenge because it was just, it was so epic and it was so kind of big. Because, like, again, me and Amanda were not any kind of elite cyclists or, or anything even close or to Or athletes. Yeah. No. Uh, not even elite this. athletes. No, we just do triathlons for fun and for days out and kind of yeah. keep generating fit. So, you know, that, like, you could take that on and you'd breeze through it for me and Amanda to take on that type of a challenge was uh, big uh, we had my dad and his best friend John Gould they had a camper van and they went in front of us along with my best friend Marita Sharkey and her dad Sean uh, they had a car so we had like car behind us and, and the, uh, camper in uh, front. wagon in front and thank god that John Lord done such a brilliant job on our maps, on maps. because there were several occasions where Dad and John Gould went the wrong way, and only that we had such good maps and we had our wahoos on our bikes, we would have been gone the wrong way too. We just that's, were like, I said, don't trust them, do not follow them. They're gone the wrong that's way. That's what I was going to ask you. Um, I, I have the same cycle computer as you. Uh, I love it, the Wahoo Element Bolt. Uh, did John put the maps on the boat for you? Yeah, he we did them all yeah. up, and then we yeah. Strava, Strava, and, we and then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an, it, that's uh, it's what I love about that. Because um, I've got kind of gone out cycling here and you wouldn't know exactly where you were or how to get back. So, But you can sync it with your phone and send the directions from your phone to the computer and you've got like a breadcrumb line to get you back, which is handy, you know. Uh, yeah. 
they're great. brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, just makes me think like uh, we went looking for those and obviously we needed an awful lot of kind of equipment for that challenge. Yeah. Or, you know, without, well, we had spare bikes, say, but like, I mean, Clark's, you know, Martin there, Clark's, my God. Clark's, super, didn't Clark's attend with cycle us. superstore in Cavan. Well, they yeah. are a superstore. I'll tell they are. You. They're He's amazing. Yeah. Off with more wheels and tubes and gels and everything that we could have yeah. ever, ever needed was, yeah. and, and you know, they were such a support to us um, and really sent us off. Never needed, never got a flat wheel along the way, nothing, but only for them. You know, like we yeah. were, we were sent off, the thing was packed, we were ready for off and it was, it was fantastic. So day one was obviously me and Amanda. Mm -hmm. um, so as we had some nice sisterly time together, didn't we Amanda? Yeah, we Mostly did, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Going up Mostly the hill. because I'm bigger than that, her, um, Brian. I broke the wind on day one. Can I just... Oh, you cycling in front that. for you? You didn't go side by side? No. We were just I always cycled. cycle in front, go up. I always, I'm always going in front, up going hill. up the hills. Yeah. yeah. And then I obviously have to go back into the first position then after the hill. Great stuff. I won't say any more about that. Um, um, but... Now, I've, <laughs> I've done a couple of silly cycles in my time as well. and uh, You have? I have, uh, but I, what I'd like to ask the pair of you, where were, I'd imagine finishing it was the high point, but uh, where were the difficult points? Uh, would we kind of say that that was Donegal or was there times and uh, second or third? It was Donegal, like, this is too much. <laughs> um, Donegal, Petico to Black Lion. I oh, thought yeah. I would never see it. And then we got in and you could see the shores of um, Loch McNeen. Yes. And you're cycling by and you're going, oh my God, this is great. We're nearly there. We're nearly finished. It's the longest lake ever. <laughs> ever. Just in the stretch. It's on cycling your left side. For a long time. Line, yeah? Yeah. yeah. For a lot of kilometers until you start to see the signs for Belcou. Yeah. I really thought we'd never get there. Yeah. yeah. It's awful. But Amanda, there was loads of brilliant moments on that day one as well. Oh, there was. There I was. can remember at one point you just started shouting behind me, Oh my God, there's a cow. There's a cow in the field. I haven't seen anything but sheep for the last X amount of effing hours. There's an that's, actual cow. That's, that's something that Amanda told me for his brain. There's nothing but sheep in Donegal. Sheep. Yeah. It's the only animal to have in Donegal. Fact, there was just so many funny moments, uh, brilliant. And that day one was tough because it was only the two of us, I suppose, you know, mm. and there was an awful lot of hills, there was a lot of ground to cover. Day two was fantastic. We had Sash and Declan. Oh, that was amazing. Down, uh, guys from the Cabin Triathlon yeah. Club met us down at that morning to start off again. So our next one was going to be bringing us through Cav on the second day. Uh, then we had Brendan Marsh, met him along the road. He was coming to meet us. And we cycled the whole road. Imagine all right, yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. It gave you such energy that morning. Oh, he's know? such a man. He's Paul such a positive with, person, you know. Paul Garvey was there as well. Yeah, Paul yeah. Garvey came as ever. in Black yeah. Lion as well. Absolutely, and yeah. It was so funny. There was the five of us cycling out of Black Lion at seven o'clock on the Saturday morning, and we're cycling on out the road, and then we see this cyclist coming towards us with this high vis vest, and everybody's going oh my God, there's other crazy people out cycling at this hour of the morning. And then we realized it was Brendan Marsh when he started roaring at us to come on, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> but it was, we so, had loads of company on day two though. Like we got as far as Valley Connell and there was another great gang. There was quite a few there, so I'm not going to mention names in case I miss anybody. Yeah. But um, yeah. that was really, really good. Flew up and then into Cavan, and then our good friend Johnny O'Keefe was there, ready for action. He yeah. was all yeah. was there to help us. He done big um, chat through with us um, during our big cycle, the one in the square. Yes, uh, and then here he was again to do it that day, and sandwiches and tea and loads of chat. It was fantastic. Our friend Ursula done like this big massive balloon um, archway for us yeah. cycling, so we felt really, nice. really special. It was yeah. really, really great, yeah. and then. Flew off with another gang of people, and then some of our cousins' friends they cycled over in Emmyville and um, cycling club over there. They came as far as Cav and got dropped off, and then they cycled, cycled and brought back. us over the Monaghan leg off the route. And yeah. then uh, yeah. stopped and stayed at my cousins and my, my godmother, Auntie Dot, uh, fed us like kings that night with a big barbecue over there in Glass Lock. Um, so day two was, it was like a, an absolute opposite of day one. Day two was yeah, epic. It was. was yeah. Loads of the only thing we were afraid of was we were, we, were, we were going too fast. Me and Amanda were like, what do we average speed on day two, Amanda? 
Was it something stupid, oh, like 36 it was or like, something? No, it was about, I think it was about 28 kilometers yeah, and it, right. an hour. It and was, it was, the leg was, was it 130 kilometers that leg was yeah. in total? Mm. Yeah. And we had done Fight more cycling. than that the previous day. So yeah. we were a bit yeah. kind of like, oh God, we're very exciting ourselves with all the chat but, here. But um, bear in um, mind, yeah. Brian, that the biggest cycles that we'd done was the 100 kilometer cycle in Donegal about four weeks prior to Fire. us taking yeah. on the challenge. And we were able to go out the following day and only do a 40 kilometer cycle. So that was all we'd done. Okay, so uh, we finished there. You're talking about uh, getting to Glasslock on day two and to your aunt's house where you had a barbecue. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And we were well-minded and well-fed, as only Auntie Dot knows how to do in style. And then we were all set then for the last leg of the journey. And I have to say, Amanda, I found you were grand, actually, on day three. Yeah. I think so it was, was Glasslock where you finished yeah. on day two? Yeah, we finished... Um, yeah, we finished in, in well in Monaghan and then headed off again down the road. And uh, my cousin was with us. John Lord was over. Johnny Malloy was over. And then uh, Larkin from Emmy Vale Cycling Club. He had so much fun on day two that he came back <laughs> to cycle with us on day three as well for most of it. Yeah. So we headed off. But I really struggled. Just one of the first bits. I think we were just coming out that big long road out of Castle Blaney. And he yeah. just... Oh, getting on, getting onto the bike when you're doing, moving, yeah. Getting onto the no, bike. I'm not, I'm not moving. <laughs> getting onto the bike, you know, uh, days after days, and you're after doing big distances the days before, and your your legs do take a little while to to warm up and get going again. You know, even sitting down, sitting down in the saddle yeah. is just not fun. <laughs> no. uh, when you've done uh, hundred kilometers for the last for the previous two days, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, um, but. We got there. Actually, once I got warmed up, I was okay. But just mm. that was just a real struggle. That, that was a moment for me along the way. But then we were, uh, that day was so funny because we had only planned to be in Carringford. I don't know. We had a time anyway. And, uh, like four um, o'clock or something, I think. Yeah. I think it was Mommy was coming over. Uh, Mum was going to be there and some of our mates. And uh, we had met, we met Collie that day and Etna. The KBRT. Right, yeah. they, they drove out to meet us somewhere along the way. I can't remember. It was some famous pub or somebody was shot. Some, yeah, that? some yeah, some famous pub. I can't remember where it was either. Anyway, it was, that was lovely because we got to meet up with them on the day, which was great. And then Damien, uh, you know Damien. Damien Ruddy, yeah. KBRT as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Damien then came along for the last leg of it as well. And fly, we knew it was him. He was coming past in a car and he was beeping the horn. And you know, there was a lot of that going on. And that was really good, really kind of edge on for the last bit too. Of course, but yeah. We stopped and we had ice cream that day and stuff because we were like, we're going too fast. We're going to be there like way ahead of ourselves. And then we went up and... Um, when we, it was kind of a bit of a mountain to get over to Carlingford, you know. As <laughs> that would be the Cooley Peninsula, get, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah, that would be the yeah. one, yeah. When, when you tend to get close to the coast, you know, you got to go up <laughs> before you can get back down to the water. And uh, we went up there and took in the whole view and it was absolutely amazing. Up yeah, there. You could Carlingford Lock there, it's, just, it's class. Oh, it's yeah, we could, yeah, you were looking right down into it and we could have seen Omid on the side we were going down and then you could see Carlingford on the other and the sun was shining. And yeah. it was just you. Gorgeous. Yeah. It was gorgeous. But I was rather concerned about how I was going to get down the hill. I don't like going down hills on bikes at all. I actually love that. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, downhill's oh. great crack. No. I just, actually and I reward, that's the reward for going up a hill, you know, getting to go down the other side. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, tucked in. That one. I don't need that reward. It was hot. <laughs> uh, we flew. We flew down then. Yeah. So we did freewheel it down in style, and it was it was brilliant. And the guys were behind us in the um, in the car. Marita was recording us, and uh, the wagon was in front of us. And there was loads of people over, like loads of friends, like that. The Loscan crew I was telling you about Deirdre and them were over, and her yeah. husband, um, and the kids. Our own kids were there, which was lovely as well. Mark yeah. and Martin and the whole gang. Mommy was over. Who, who um, was happy? Was just, who was happier to see Mommy had finished uh, the cycle? <laughs> oh, I'd say definitely Martin and Mark. We've been yeah. gone now <laughs> for nearly three days at that stage. Yeah. So that that was awesome. And Karen Malloy was there and had our drinks, alcoholic beverages. Yeah, she had. Um, yeah, she had plastic glasses with ice and everything. Oh, no better woman. No better woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had us sorted out. 
Stephanie was there welcoming us with open arms. Um, Stephanie has helped us with many the challenge over the years as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Stephanie Lord would have actually been with us when we would have got word we were actually away in Poland when we heard right, Richard yeah. passing away. And uh, Stephanie minded us through that and got us back yeah. to Ireland. And there she was at the finish line waiting for us again with open arms. So you know, it was really emotional when you finish something like that. But it, it was is. amazing and it was an amazing achievement and you know I was really proud of Amanda and I'm sure Amanda was proud of me and uh, as usual we didn't fall out along the way yeah. um, which is always a good sign it's a good sibling <laughs> good sibling closeness sign there when you haven't fell out over three days yeah. of cycling with each other um, yeah. but it was it was fantastic I really really enjoyed that challenge and I would actually do it again in the morning I would do it again in the morning yeah like even like when I was thinking of like I did those two cycles for anyone who doesn't know who may be watching this or listening to this. I did Mizz and Tamalin in 2016 and I did, uh, so that's Ireland's most southerly point to the most northerly point. And then the following year I had nothing to do. So I said, right, sure. What's the most east- easterly point in Ireland? And it's a place called Boar Point up in County Down on the Newton Arts Peninsula and decided to go from there all the way back down to Kerry out to a place called uh, Dunquin Pier. Uh, well, it was actually, there's a beach near Duncan Pier where oh, Ryan's daughter was filmed and it the track down to it is the most westerly point you can travel on a bicycle you know, on the mainland of Ireland. So I went okay. down there and then went up to Duncan Pier. But uh, I didn't didn't do them for charity because they're more of kind of a personal challenge and at the time I was thinking it's a good chance I'm not gonna finish this. I better not tell too many people I'm doing it in the first place. So uh No, yeah, so you kinda kept them all pretty secret, so you did. Yeah. Well actually that leads me on to, I know you wanted to interview us, Brian, but it leads me nicely into something I wanted to ask you because I haven't been speaking to you properly face to face. Be nice. Um, so you've, you've done all, no, no, it's not like, you've done all these challenges. I know you've done them. You've done loads of them, like the ones you're after talking about there. What's different or what's made you do this one this time for the charities that you've chosen? What, what's come about in your mind or where have you come up with that idea? Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I also said I'd do something for charity at some point. Um, after doing those two big cycles, uh, I remember being somewhere around Cavan and someone says to me, oh, you're after doing another big cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't raise any money for charity. And I was like, no, uh, not exactly. Now, I did, uh, after they kind of pointed out to me and made me feel quite guilty at the time, I gave money to CF and um, then to Cavan Autism Parent Support because uh, I, I used to work with children with autism and then... Uh, I think Cavan in general were doing something big for CF at the time, so I threw them a few quid. Uh, but I said, right, the next time I do something silly or stupid, um, I'm going to make it worth my while and worth the while of a few charities, you know. Um, I suppose yeah, yeah. this year with lockdown and coronavirus and everything going on, um, there's a huge appeal out by Pieta. So Pieta, kind of formerly known as Pieta House, uh, they do mental health support services and suicide prevention and their big their big fundraiser every year is um darkness into light and because you can't have big group gatherings uh darkness into light isn't happening anywhere and uh, darkness into light took place in over 250 venues last year and raised huge huge funds i think north it was north of six million in 2018 obviously much more than that in 2019 and you know it, it, it was just breaking records every year so this year without it going on i decided i want to do it for that uh kbrt um you guys are the first people i knew who did anything for kbrt it was the first time i became aware of it and uh then i used to go to couple of months school meetings so i was secretary for couple of months school who organized um football for uh primary schools and i was secretary for that in cabin and I got to know Collie Bell and Damien Ruddy at those meetings, you know. So it was all kind of linking up. And uh, they were involved with coming to Month School from County Down. And then obviously, uh, they, they essentially were, were, you know, KBRT. Like they, they are uh, some of the uh, bigger people involved in the committee there or the board, you know. So uh, I said, right, if I ever do anything, we'll be for KBRT and maybe something else. So that's why it's KBRT and Pieta. And uh, yeah, like dad passed away um, in Spain in 2017. I was out in the desert. I was only here three weeks when dad passed away. And uh, the, some of the, within an hour of finding out, one of the first people I got onto was Amanda or yourself, Lisa. I can't remember which now, but I remember getting onto one straight away to get me a number for 
Damien Roddy or Collie Bell and uh, I contacted both of them within an hour uh, just to find out what we needed to do or what they might be able to do for us. Um, in the end, um, Dad and Mum had their travel insurance or health insurance, which uh, got Dad home. Uh, but KBRT were fantastic just as an additional resource um, just someone to kind of talk to, I guess, and to put run ideas by or to find out more information about what the repatriation process is in in Europe, I guess, you know. So uh, I have to say, yeah. Collie, and, Collie and Damien and yourselves were very, very good to me back then and to the whole family. And uh, we, we we just kind of said collectively that um, if we ever did that, it would be, it would be for KBRT. Yeah, because it's tough brain, isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it's something outside the money and it's something that always struck me and Amanda as I said to you when we were doing the fundraising, like, I mean, they, you know, you obviously looked after getting your dad home and he's done a fantastic job off it. But sometimes in some families, they're simply, it's too much to deal with and it's too yeah. much to bear. Like, the very notion of trying to figure out what flight can a person be repatriated on. Um, yeah. You know, like, there's just a gazillion questions there and I'm sure anyone watching this will, you know, be thinking to themselves, God, like, how does that happen? Like, and how does you know, how do you get in touch with a funeral director there? And how does the funeral director pick up on this side? And there's just a million things. It yeah, it was, it, was, it was an absolute maze, process. you know. Like, Dad passed away yeah. on the 2nd of September, which was a Saturday. Um, and, like, maybe Ireland is quite good and efficient in uh, dealing with certain things. Uh, but uh, in Spain, um, we were waiting quite a while for what seemed to be very straightforward things to happen to actually happen and take effect and uh, so we were there until the following Friday it was the following Friday when we flew home from Spain myself, mum and yeah. a couple of family members were out there um, and then yeah like it, it was just a maze that we had to navigate and uh, I can see how KBRT stepping in and doing that for families is, is just fantastic and it's fantastic that they're able to do that for people yeah. And yeah. as well as that, Brian, like whenever the KBR t- team step in there, like we have to remember as well that these are sudden and tragic deaths abroad. Yeah. These aren't somebody is sick and there's time to prepare. They're the most sudden and tragic events that anybody's ever going to be dealt with. And I know yeah. one thing is for sure that our family at that particular time, mom and dad and me and Amanda, we would have been lost without the work that they did. Yeah. You know, dad flew out to Perth to be with Richard. Uh, we were here at Mam, And like, just without that, I really just don't know how we would have got through, Amanda, had it only been for Polly and Damien and, you know, the wider KBRT team. I really just don't yeah. know. And yeah. that's that's the yeah. part of a brain, isn't it? It's the support oh, of the people around you. Yeah. And it runs in, I suppose, to your, to your second charity with Piet. I think they're a wonderful cause. And because of the times we're in at the moment, even the most resilient of people, I would classify myself as very resilient. Mm. Um, there's been days when I've been feeling quite down and I'm pretty sure that everybody else would be honest enough to say that too. So Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful yeah. Yeah. second cause there, um, Brian Pieta, they do wonderful, wonderful work and uh, they're really badly needed at the moment. So I think you picked two fantastic they're all all the charities are fantastic but yeah. them two in particular I suppose to me are, are just really up there um, and, and need support you know yeah 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 well yeah exactly and I think there were I kind of been thinking about doing some for charity for quite a while and it was always going to be something around those two uh, those two charities you know and uh, yeah sure look we're I'm nine days into it now at the moment and it's going all right Felt quite fatigued now this morning. Uh, I was up fairly early the last three mornings and maybe could have been getting a little bit more sleep. I decided it was a great idea to take into a quiz with the college lads at home at 11 o'clock last night and then not go to bed till about one. So, yeah. Um, that wouldn't be helping the, helping the cause, Brian. That no, no, no. So, you need to have loads of rest. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a good 36-hour rest from... So this morning, what, finished around nine. So, yeah, tomorrow I'm not going to get on the bike to maybe six. You know, just give myself a good... Okay. Good rest. Now, um, I decided I'd like to finish off my oh, yeah. chat, which is uh, on a lighter note, a bit of crack, uh, oh. pit- pitches against each other, and uh, see who who will be the who who will come out on top. <laughs> no, it's me. I am still crap at quizzing. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, 
So we're going to start with a quick fire round. I'm going to say one item or, no, or another. And Amanda, you're first alphabetically and you're older, so we'll get you Thanks. to answer first and then Lisa. Uh, Thanks for throwing in the older bit there, Brian, in case anyone else was wondering. It's always nice to clarify. Thank know, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wiser as well. Isn't that right? Thanks. Yeah, She's, obviously. She is obviously. also wiser as well, Brian. That's yeah. okay. She can take no, that. Not when it comes to quizzes, though. Right. Okay. Well, Regardless look, this is this is all about. preference. Okay. There's no there's no wrong answers here. Uh, right. Here we go. Lions or berries? Lions. Lions. Yeah. Lions. Okay. You don't have to agree now, if you don't feel like. Oh it. no, that's that's an easy one. I want to see what sets you apart because, like, so a lot of people like you know what yourself. A lot of people say, do you know one of them, Keats, Lisa, or Amanda? I never know which one it is. Uh, like that <laughs> well, I was so out much. running this morning, and the neighbour went. Hello, Lisa. And then went, oh no, hello, Amanda. And I was like, well, doesn't matter, we answered Fine. either. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, so we're both, we both look the same and now we both like Lion's tea bags, so that's great. <laughs> All right. Um, I probably should have had this one first. Anyway, learning as I go along. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Texting or calling? I'm going to go, 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 Amanda, sorry. I didn't hear that. Sorry. Texting or calling? Phone calls or texting? Oh, calling. I'm old school too, Brian. I like okay. to be able to hear the voice. Summer or winter? Summer. Summer. Cinema or Netflix? This is bad. <laughs> oh, Netflix. Cinema I'm going to go Netflix cinema. Okay. I'm going to go <laughs> cinema at the moment because... I'd really love to go to the cinema at the minute because I'm so sick of watching Netflix by myself. Very good. Uh, a new car or a new bike? New car. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Sorry, all the cyclist people. A totally new car. Good stuff. Um, which do you dis? No, which do you not mind? Uh, rain or snow? Which do you prefer? No. Snow. snow. Okay. Definitely snow. Singing or dancing? Oh God, neither. <laughs> There's one major difference That's between me and Amanda because I love to dance I, I and I love karaoke, and Amanda hates when I get up on karaoke and probably hates it when I'm dancing as well. Okay. But if you give yeah. her enough gin, she can dance too. Oh, absolutely. But only if I have gin. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, next one: fried breakfast or Sunday lunch? Sunday lunch. Yeah, Sunday lunch with proper gravy. Yeah. Haven't had that now in absolute months. Haven't had roast oh. beef in months. Roast I can't remember when I had roast beef since the last. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, cycling or running? Cycling. Cycling. <laughs> yep. Cycling or swimming? Cycling. cycling. <laughs> swimming or running? Running. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go swimming. Okay. Uh, we'll move on. Okay. Most likely. Who's most likely to fall off the bike? Oh, me. Can't tap her. <laughs> there you are. Me. Yeah, me. Amanda. More likely to talk to animals. <laughs> Definitely <Lisa>. me. <laughs> I still talk to them. I was talking to the dogs earlier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, survival of the fittest. Uh, who is who would be the first to die in a zombie apocalypse? Me. <laughs> Mandy, you wouldn't, because I'd have your back, pet. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Very supportive. I'm I'm relieved over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. be safe. That's all I have. Um, look, it's always great talking to the Perrys, and thanks for agreeing. Thanks very much, Brian. That was oh, good. Uh, so much Brian. Is, uh, uh, well, we'll wish you success on your 31-day quest. Yeah. And uh, we wish you success in your fundraising. And uh, just remember, when the going gets tough and you're stuck in those days, you're having a wee bit of rut, uh, there's great people on your back and uh, with, along with that wind. And we'll get you over the last few kilometers. Absolutely. We'll to jump on an old virtual ride with you at any point. Feel free to shout. Yeah, Here's might do that. Help, Zoom. Um, Zoom. In any way that. we can. Yeah. And... Fair play to you and the best of luck. Thank you very much. Well done, Brian. You'll Thank do you. great. Just please remember your cycling shoes and your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and a bottle of water. Yeah, I, went, I nearly yes, got my water as well. 
Oh God, looking my heads on my shoulders. Uh, guys, thanks, man, and uh, we'll we'll stop there. So that is all from today's episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed listening or watching it. Uh, I definitely had great crack putting it together and so had the girls. And I think what they've done for KBRT in Cavan is, is just amazing. So um, I was glad to be able to share all of this with you. So until the next one, see you later.